Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial from ANSYS detailing how to do the static IR drop analysis of a design using Red Hawk. Here I have already loaded up a design and have conducted the static analysis. To get a feel of how the static drop looks across the entire design you can go ahead and click on the IR map it shows you the voltage drop of the wire and via color coded of course across the entire design you can always change the color map that you want set the different thresholds for different color codes to get a view of the instance drop map you can choose to show that As before, you can always change the color codes. To get a list of the instances or the wire and via which has the maximum voltage drop, you can go in results. This is the power node list and here you have the ground node drop. Similarly, you can also select the instance drop map. It is always a good idea to use Red Hawk Explorer to gain more information on the analysis that you have just conducted. So let me go ahead and open up Red Hawk Explorer. I have already generated the results. So the primary page of the Red Hawk Explorer gives you an idea about the entire design, the size of the design, the power consumed by the design, the minimum supply voltage of the design and so on and so forth but the tab that we are interested in is the hotspot tab this tab gives you an overview of the different kind of analysis that you had done on the design so if you go ahead and take the static IR check option on the left hand side you get a bird's eye view of the instance voltage drop of the design and it also shows you the top three regions of violation and these regions will also be highlighted on the bird's eye view so Y3 the choice of three is completely arbitrary you can ask Red Hawk Explorer to generate any number of hotspots that you want it just so happens that I decided to run Red Hawk to show only three hotspots if you scroll down it gives you more information so here is a histogram showing the static IR distribution it shows a histogram between the number of regions and the static IR drop it also shows you a domain based breakup of the IR drop of instances as well as the wire and via it also gives you options to set the cross probing any map that you can see here can be replicated over in Red Hawk by clicking on the show in Red Hawk button. So let's go ahead and take a look on one of the hotspots. Let's go ahead and open the first hotspot. So he, here we see that the instance in question has a drop of about 200 millivolts and this drop is contributed both from the power domain as well as the ground domain. There are a few tabs at the bottom of the screen which might help you debug the issue. So the root cause tab gives you information which can help you locate the root cause pretty fast. So here we see that the power distribution quality, the clock buffer clustering and the PG resistance distribution is under violation. So power distribution quality violation tells you that there is a higher power distribution in this particular region as compared to other regions of the design. The clock buffer clustering again tells you that there is a higher concentration of clock buffers here which can lead to a higher power. So they are kind of connected. The PG resistance distribution tells you that the power grade which is delivering power to this particular instance might not be as robust as you had thought. If you look at the data integrity 
which may again be a cause of a very false violation. We see that this looks fine. So let's go ahead and look at why it is showing this issue. If you click on this particular instance, it gives you more information about the instance in question. This is the properties of the failing instance, which can be accessed by selecting the instance in the Red Hat GUI and clicking on the P button over here. So the data integrity of the instance looks good. There are no false violations over here. The power, the load and the resistance of the instance also looks good. If you take a look at the path tracing, it shows you the minimum resistance path of the instance in question to the power and ground pads. You can always use cross probing option to show the same map over in the Red Hawk GUI. So here we see that this particular instance somewhere over here has to go through a longer path to get to the power pads over here. So you might be wondering why it is not connecting to some of these power pads over here. So that if you look into the design, so let me just open up everything over here. We see that there is a huge concentration of metal 6 over here, metal 5 over here, and metal 4 over here. So the majority of power being delivered to this region is through the metal 5 rails over here to the metal 4 rails over here. A reduction in number of the metal 5 might be one of the probable causes for a higher voltage drop of this instance. Similarly, by combining the data obtained from the Red Hawk Explorer and the data obtained by looking at the power grid analysis of the failing instance, you can quickly root cause the issue and move forward. This brings this tutorial to a close. Thank you.